the shows lean left, some lean right, but we lean local and business. This is North Georgia Business Radio X with Phil Benelli. For the next hour, we will celebrate the businesses in our area and the people that run them. Find us on Facebook at North Georgia Business Radio X and online at NorthGeorgiaBusinessRadioX.com. Now, here's Phil Benelli. Today, we've got a show rich in insights for you. I'm here with the president of Free Chapel College, Dr. Rich Rogers. Dr. Rich, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I uh, was so excited. I had seen something, I don't know where, on social media or the newspaper or something that Free Chapel had a college and uh, did not know much else about it, but was intrigued. And so I was so excited to get the opportunity to meet its president and learn more about it. Tell us about the college. Well, Free Chapel College will start our eighth year this fall. Wow. Uh, We're excited about that. Uh, We have record enrollment. Um, We are now one college on two coasts. We have a campus here in Gainesville and um, with about roughly about 150 students. And we have a campus in Orange County with, with approximately 35 students uh, that, that are doing the same exact thing we're doing out there. Uh, we're, we're doing the same thing here as we're doing out there. Uh, we um, started with about 37 students back in 2016, our very first year. Uh, pastor Franklin, the pastor of Free Chapel, uh, had a vision for multiple campuses and raising up leaders that have our DNA and uh, understand who we are and what we do um, so they could then staff a lot of these campuses. And today, uh, at, of our eight campuses, um, we have Free Chapel gradu- graduates that are staffing almost all those campuses. We have graduates that are on staff at churches all over America. And um, we're growing, we're excited, adding new programs and um We also are in partnership with Southeastern University. So that means our students can come to us for a two-year ministry leadership training program while also getting their accredited degree. About half of our students take advantage of that, half of our students just do the ministry leadership training program. Then we also have a two-year internship program for their third and fourth year for those that want to stay and continue to develop their skills uh, at our our many different campuses. and, And then eventually most of those are hired. Okay. A lot of cool stuff there. Yeah. So you saw, and I imagine, were there eight campuses in 2016 when it started? Now, we've added a couple of campuses since okay. that time. We've added an, on, uh, an online campus as well in that time. And our online campus is now actually our largest campus. They run about 16,000 people every Sunday morning. Whew. And then uh, we have our main campus in Gainesville. We have campuses in uh, Cumming, which is soon to be a, an Alpharetta campus. We just obtained an amazing building there. We have a campus in Gwinnett, Georgia, uh, or, and we have a campus in Brazelton, Georgia, Midtown, Georgia, a campus in um, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and a campus in Irvine, California, right. along with our uh, online campus. So you saw, hey, we're growing, we're, we're fulfilling our mission, and part of that is growth, and we need leaders. How are we going to find them? And then you said, well, why don't we make some? Yes, absolutely. Let's grow them. And so, you know, we have a a youth conference every year called the Forward Youth Conference. And at that conference, there's typically between 12 and 14,000 students or or young people that attend that conference every year. Uh, The only time that that conference has not met was the COVID summer. But every year other than that, since 2007, that we've had that conference. And we just always had uh, students at that conference that say, man, I just, I, I'd love to be connected to your church in some way. Uh, and so Pastor Franklin, he, he started having that vision, I think as far back as 2012, 2013. And then in 2016, we went for it and we launched and we had our first 37 students, like I said, and they did their two-year program. And many of those students are now on staff today. Uh, this year, like I said, we'll have about 150 students across both uh, in, in, in Georgia, another 35 students in um, in California, and mm. uh, they have an amazing program that they get to be a part of. They're trained by world class leaders and pastors, and and we have guest speakers that come in. A strong Bible curriculum that we do two days a week, and then the thing they love the most is we have hands on practicums two days a week where they're actually in these areas of ministry, actually doing them. 
And then when you take what they're learning on those two days a week, whether well, it's, it's everything from worship to production to marketing to youth ministry, young adult ministry, children's ministry, um, uh, our preschool ministry, our college ministry, all these things. And then they, they actually take those and they use those on the weekends at our campuses and throughout the week. That's fantastic. And so it is, it is a immersive, hands-on, on-the-go, on-the-job training, but also a very solid educational and leadership um, uh, practical or a leadership program that we that we have the students go through. If you are just joining us on North Georgia Business Radio X, I'm your host Phil Benelli here with Dr. Rich Rogers, president of Free Chapel College. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so when you decided, you all decided we need to start this training program. We're going to make it a college. You mentioned that now. Uh, there's a partnership with Southeastern University where students can get accredited. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, was that partnership always in place? Yes. Okay. Well, I love, I imagine that that helped you to start quicker, that you didn't have to go through your own accreditation. And I love that because so many times we have a big project we want to do, and maybe we could go ahead and get started in having an impact, but we go through all this rigmarole. You said, hey, I'm not going to wait years to do this. Yeah. We'll find a partner, and we're going to kick this thing off. That's correct. So from day one, our students could be in an accredited degree program through South- Southeastern University. <clears throat> they offer approximately 20 different majors that mm. the students can major in during that time. Um, They'll, most of our students in the, the, the Southeastern program, they receive their AA as well as their ministry leadership certificate at the end of two years. Um, a lot of those stay on in that third and fourth year internship program, interning at our campuses while finishing up their bachelor's degree. Online. Yes, online. And we have actually classes in person at our campus, and the, the bulk of their classes are online, but several classes also meet face-to-face on our campus. I just love that. Uh, If you are out there listening and you have an issue, you're trying to do something and there are roadblocks, for instance, getting accreditation. I don't even know what that process looks like. I imagine it's pretty lengthy. It's daunting. Yeah. Um, Be focused on how can I achieve my goal, which for you all, train these great leaders and offer the opportunity for accreditation, which they don't have to take, take you up on. Um, how can I achieve my end objective in a different way? And I'll tell you just from my experience, if you are committed to your end goal and you say, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You're, it's amazing how your mind opens up to, to figure out different ideas. Absolutely. This is a hybrid model of, of higher education. And I really think this is the future. The future is less and less the traditional liberal arts four-year program that you walk away with mountains of debt, mm-hmm. with a degree, finding jobs that don't even fit your degree. Uh, this is actual on-the-job training in the, the transition between the learning process to the doing process to the internship process to the getting hired full-time. It, it, there's, there's tracks there in multiple ministries, multiple uh, areas mm-hmm. and not all of our students are here to just do ministry. A lot of them are they're just setting aside two years of their life to kind of dedicate to learning more about the Lord and 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 kind of kind of letting the Lord give them a picture of their future in that two years. Mm. And then as they go out, even in their secular jobs, churches all over America are staffed with volunteers with boards that are all people that are working secular jobs, and they mm-hmm. bring a whole different flavor. They bring a whole different dynamic to any church that you're not going to just get by people that are hired to be pastors. There, there's business business acumen. Mm-hmm. There's there's um, the financial world. There's there's all kinds of things that, that they bring, leadership, maturity, understanding of what it takes to, to move from the college into the professional world. We have so many uh, business owners, entrepreneurs in our church, and they're able to, to speak into what we do as a church and even as a college. And so I do think this is the, the model of the future. I love it. I, yep. Let's let's break down this model a little more because I think it's fantastic when we get back from this break on North Georgia Business Radio X.
How do you connect the dots between learning and doing, between ingesting book knowledge and curriculum and applying that? Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk about that now here on North Georgia Business Radio X. Uh, I'm your host, Phil Benelli. Honored to be with our guest, Dr. Rich Rogers, president of Free Chapel College. Dr. Rich, I love before the break, we were talking about how the students, they have training. You know, they get there. This is a, this is a college. They're, they're learning. There's things that there are very experienced, great leaders that are pouring into them. But from really day one, they are applying. So as they're doing, they are applying. And I know there's an internship. Um, that can come in years three and four, but it sounds like really the whole thing is both learning and internship hands-on all in one. I think that's the the way of the future. I think that's where education has to go. Um, To separate the university experience and and the expense Mm. from like the end result, which is supposed to be a career, which is supposed to be a job, which is supposed to be, you know, to prepare you for that next place in life where you can kind of stand on your own two feet. I feel like uh, education, secondary, or excuse me, higher education in America has kind of lost its way. Mm. And I think these hybrid models, these certification programs, these these places where you can go through and, and you can learn, but you're doing immediately as you're learning. And so there's a constant attachment to the learning part, part of what you're doing, to the doing, to the doing to where you're actually a part of a staff in an internship kind of role. So not just learning in a vacuum, but learning in a team, learning in mm. community, mm. which is mm. which is collaboration, which is all those things that are learning to work in teams. Um, that's the future. And then connecting that to you know the, the reason you're here. You're here to grow. You're here for God to be able to show you who you are and who he is and what he wants to do with your life. But ultimately, you're here so that when you leave here, you can take that next step. I mean, we my staff knows our job is to help these kids find jobs in, 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 in the areas where they feel God's called them to serve. Not just jobs just to get by, but to think bigger to dream bigger because they're coming from a world-class church with world-class training and world-class experience through our services, through the amazing conferences that we do, the dynamic leaders, all the people that come through. So they are positioned to work in any church in the world and and actually any organization because the it's the same principles, it's the same values, it's the same integrity, the same work ethic, it's the same uh, commitment level, passion, all those kinds of things. And so keeping all those things connected to the learning process is huge. I love it. And yeah, I would agree that they, if you're learning ministry leadership, you know, you, which you're learning leadership, leadership yep. through, you know, the ministry experience, but the leadership principles are universal. Right. Um, I, I totally agree with you. This is the model that works. And really, we could look at it as the model of the future. It's also the model of the past, yeah. and in some countries, the model of now. It's 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 really an improved apprenticeship program, I would say. Yeah, but, but with a strong, but it doesn't lose the collegiate academic side of things, right? And so that's important. So even, but even like in our Bible curriculum, we it's a two year approach uh, where there's systematic theology. There's the basics of who God is and His nature and all those kinds of things, but then we also do some very practical thing. We have practical theology where they look at okay so let's look at theology and how it applies to different parts of your life different decisions you have to make different aspects of church governance all those kinds of things and then the third element which is biblical literacy where they understand the major characters the major events the kind of the historical timeline of scripture uh, all those main things they have a basic understanding of scripture for an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old who really doesn't walk out in the world and say, man, I want to learn all about Bible. And so a lot of times education isn't just what they want to learn, but what they, they're going to need sure. and what they'll appreciate more even as time goes on. And so we focus on that academic side of things as well, but we don't separate that from the experiential. We, we say you don't take the academic and it's in a vacuum and now mm. you go do this mm. over here. What you learn in the academic has got to apply in who you are as a person in the, your experiences, in your the places you're going, the things you're going to be do, doing. So there's constantly making that connection between the academic and the practical. I love that. I um, I have a farm, mm-hmm. and uh, we raise 
uh, grass-fed beef is one of the things. And as we were starting, I, I knew I wanted to get cows. Mm -hmm. And I had this basically a textbook, Raising Grass-Fed Beef, <laughs> which was excellent. Yeah. And I said, I, and because I didn't know anything about cows, and I thought, I will read this book. And once I've read it, I will be, therefore, ready to get cows, and I will. So I was reading it. Very good. Very informative. And maybe a third or a halfway through, the opportunity came to just go ahead and get these cows. And my first thought was, well, I'm not ready. I haven't read this book all the way through yet. But I thought, well, I got to hop on and get it. So I did. And through that experience, I learned, I mean, if I had read the whole book. Yeah. I would have retained 10% yep. because I didn't have background with cows. It, would have, it wouldn't have really clicked. Once I got them, then I was able to keep learning and it all made, it started to make sense because yep. I was applying it as I was learning. Yeah. Such a big difference. Huge. There's theory and there's practice. Mm. And when you separate the two, the theory really lessens. It's like mm -hmm. uh, you're learning all this theory. It's like until they're connect, they, they can connect the mm. why they need to know that Mm -hmm. to the learning process and then when you connect to why they need to learn it to learn it while they're actually doing it that's huge and i i i just think that's that's the future at free chapel college <clears throat> we like to say that um we're, we're about the heart mind hands and feet and so that that really is who we are and so the heart is the heart of a leader it's understanding what it means to be a leader, not just meaning how you lead a group of people, but even in your own personal life. How are you leading by example? How are you leading by the things you say and the way you conduct yourself? And so our, our, our campus pastors and our staff do a lot of those classes with the students on leadership. And then so that's the heart. The mind, that's, that's scripture. So you can't, you can't take all the things that you're becoming as a person and separate those from from who God is and your understanding of scripture. So we're growing there. Heart, mind, hands. Hands is the practical. That's the hands-on experiences that they have two days a week, events at their campuses and then on Sundays. And so all of our students pick a campus. And so they're all kind of dialed into one of our eight campuses. So heart, mind, hands, and then feet. That's when they're actually at the campuses actually working, they're actually taking what they've learned and now using it. That's putting it into practice. Not just with an instructor, but now now they're out there and they've got to lead in some kind of area. They have to serve in some kind of area. They have to be servant. They, they learn what it means to be a servant leader, not just like the person from the stage leading from mm -hmm. the stage. And so um, heart, mind, hands, and feet, that's kind of who we are. But it's the connectivity between the different aspects of the academic, the practical, the serving, the actual, uh, all the training, it's the, all that connectivity. That's what makes the program special. Boy, I love also about that connection that not only is the theory and the practice and the academic and the practical all interwoven to thus maximize their impact, but the instructors are also ones who are doing. Mm -hmm. You didn't just bring in, hey, you're right. a professor of this. It's the people doing ministry yeah. that are teaching. Yes. Oh, in college, I'll never forget. I had this, I got a finance degree and I had this one finance professor that all she had done was been in academia. Mm -hmm. And she was teaching us, basically the whole class was you, you, handwriting out financial modeling yeah. formulas, which would never be used ever yeah. in a million years. And what a waste of time and what a wasted class because she she wasn't actually doing anything. Well, she didn't have anything to teach. There's a joke in academia that those who do, those who uh, don't do teach, yep. you know, and so uh, that doesn't happen here. And so when they're with these, their, whoever their instructors are for leadership, these are people that have been doing it for many years successfully. And they they are walking them through key principles. And, and, and the other way we like to teach in those classes is it's not a thing of here's just providing instruction. It's saying, okay, every single leader we have that, that instructs the students, they all have their own path. They all have the own th their own challenges in their ministry. Oh, and let's pick up yes. on those paths right after this break here on North Georgia Business Radio X.
We're all on different paths. How do you link up your leaders on the path uh, to help the next generation come up on that same one as applicable? Welcome back to North Georgia Business Radio X. I'm your host, Phil Benelli, here with Dr. Rich Rogers, president of Free Chapel College. Hmm. Dr. Rich, right before the break, we were talking about these leadership paths. Let's yeah. pick back up with that. So in our leadership um, the segment of what we do of, of our teaching, the students have a leadership class once a week with uh, the different pastors and leaders at Free Chapel. And the way we teach that, they don't just stand up and say, here's leadership principles. They actually talk about their journey. Uh, but they do it in such a way that it becomes instructional. And so because they all took different paths, they were all different ages, different life stages and things like that when they came into ministry. At every point in their ministry, from being offered the job to like, what's the first things you did when you started, to like your two years in, what kind of situations uh, did you deal with? What were some dilemmas? What were some roadblocks? How did you overcome? Those kinds of things. As, uh, as those teachers instruct the students in those areas, what they do is they walk them through their experience, and, and every point where they had a dilemma or decision to make, they stop it down right there, and they say, okay, mm. here was my situation. Here's here, I had to decide between this and this. Here's some things I had to really take into, I, I mean, I, I was really struggling with what to do. What would you have done had that been you in that situation? And then they got in groups, they have to kind of work collaboratively on like, well, you know, collaboratively collaboratively to say, here's kind of what I would do. Here's And they they kind of say, here's what they would do. And he says, okay, great. That's awesome. Here's what I did. And here's why I, two of you guys had great ideas. Yeah, I tried those and that didn't work. Or one of you had a great idea. I wish I had done that. That's that's great. I wish I had done that. But I did this. And they'll go to the next one. And they'll, they'll kind of walk them through over the course of eight weeks, which eight-week terms or two eight-week terms, they walk through their journey in ministry at all the decision points, all the quitting points, all the major places where they had to kind of stop and pause and say, what do I do now? They get the students to that point and they say, what would you have done? So mm. the students have to think through those situations. So not just listening. It's very, very interactive. It's not passive listening. It's it's participative learning. It's active learning. I love that. And that's how, that's how we do that. It reminds me very much of the... Uh, Harvard Business School case study model. Mm -hmm. And what a better way to learn. Yeah, to your point, you're not just talking through principles. Mm. Uh, the students are learning principles through uh, looking through the 2020 vision scope of hindsight. Yes. Getting to put themselves in those shoes and explore ideas, again, to your point, in a team environment, which they're always going to be working right. in. That is just wonderful. So how do you prepare these, the leaders that are coming in and, and facilitating this, how do you prepare them to take their experiences and give them the skill set to be able to share them in this way? Well, it's actually an easier class for them to teach. They're teaching about their life right. and their major decisions. But all those leaders know the same thing that most leaders find out over the years. Probably 80% of what you do as a leader is problem solve. Mm. You, you deal with issues as they arise. Right. You, have to, you have to look at all the factors and say, what would I do? And there are certain tools the students develop over the course of several different leaders that they've worked under in this class where there's some common things that you do. There's, there's, uh, you reach a certain point, there's prayer, there's a multitude of counsel, there's taking into consideration these different things, um, and there's certain principles that you want to use in every major decision. Mm -hmm. And so that's really where we're going, not just situational, but like what are some guiding values and principles you can use in every major decision mm -hmm. that you have to make? Mm -hmm. And they hear what those are, and they hear kind of those guiding values for each of those individuals. Because we're all different. We're not, nobody's cookie cutter. And so it's not like there's one way. And, and, and even, even in Scripture, God didn't, or Jesus didn't do everything the same. He healed one with mud. He healed another one by dunking in, in this. He, another was spit on this. Another. So there's all these different things. But in every situation, there's certain things you have to take into consideration. Counsel you should seek. Values you should not bend on. Knowing where to be flexible and not, not to be flexible. Understanding you're deciding for more than just one. As a leader, you're deciding for others. And you're deciding for the future. Take, taking the long view as opposed to just the short view. There's key things that you consider as a leader in making these decisions. So they go from like 
um, sitting in there saying, what would I do in that situation? To over time, it's like, let's apply these key principles mm-hmm. to how I would make this decision now. Mm-hmm. And let's let those kind of be our filter, our template for making this decision. And over the course of two years that they walk out with, that's a tool now. Oh, those what are, a tool Those to are have. leadership tools for the problems that they're going to encounter. Mm. I love that. Yeah, providing them the tools and the framework and developing the muscle memory of now when they're out and they're using that and they encounter these problems, they've already worked on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, closing your eyes and picturing swishing a free throw before you shoot one. Right. You've done it in your mind. You've done it. You know, you've walked through it. Um, And of course, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Right. Okay, uh, a la Mike Tyson, but but when you've gone through it, you you know you've practiced and you've spoken from people who you've spoken with people who executed a plan and did get hit in the mouth. Yeah, and learn how they responded, and you've got tools in your toolbox on how to shake yourself off. Yeah. and get back in the ring. It's just wonderful. Hundred percent. And so um, that's how we do it. It's always connecting theory to practice, mm. connecting um, academia to practice, connecting practice to the reason why you're practicing, your practice to the next step towards your future, for your career, those kinds of things. It's constantly keeping that thread running through mm. everything we do. I, uh, When I start out in, in banking, I work in commercial banking, um, I went to this six-month program, which was very beneficial, and in some ways similar. Um, we were doing a lot of academic on credit underwriting and accounting, but we were doing these case studies. We were, we were underwriting loans. We were doing it as we were learning. And the folks who were facilitating, you know, teaching this were fresh out of the field. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they were not just theorists. Right. And what a great, you know, and when I started full-time working after the program, there certainly still was an adjustment, you know, from, there was a shift from kind of the the model of learning and doing to really doing with live rounds, but I was so much more prepared. Absolutely. So I taught for right at 20 years at Pepperdine University in the graduate program of education out there in Southern California. And they, what they do really, really well is they have full-time faculty that teach maybe 40% of the classes in the master's and in the doctoral program. The other people that are your teachers in that program were people like me, uh, that I I was an actual full-time school administrator. And so um, I remember some of my most valuable classes in my doctorate program were taught by superintendents of school districts, mm. presidents of college. Mm-hmm. Not people that have spent their time in academia, but people that are actually doing the job, saying, here's the things you need to know. Here's, here's, here's how that works. And so... Uh, that just has got to be central to your level of instruction, level of leadership, and that's a whole other kind of connectivity. So they're connecting across with students, connecting to their future, connecting to their learning. But uh, what we really, really value is, is we teach you lead through relationship. And so the connecting to their leaders, mm-hmm. have the access to their leaders, and to be able to to learn from people that are actually doing these things and have done them for years, that's the value. That's I think that's what's missing in in, in um, secondary excuse me um, post secondary education, higher education, all that. I think that's it's become so academic, and it's become so almost ide- ideology driven. Mm that they've missed out on the reason why kids go to college. Mm. Uh, We'll have to delve more into this uh, after our next break, which is quickly approaching, but I'm thinking about how for that to really work, there's got to be leadership and partnership with industry because you all were able to execute this effectively for many reasons, but one is because you created it to train people to run your organization. Mm -hmm. So you as the organization know what it takes and can put that together. So... On our last segment after this break, we're going to talk about how to connect the dots and use this in your business.
Connecting the Dots. Welcome back to North Georgia Business Radio X. I'm here with Dr. Rich Rogers, and I'm your host, Phil Benelli. Uh, Dr. Rich is the president of Free Chapel College, and I was excited to have him on. And I'm even more so excited now that you were on because this has been so great. And I want to try to connect the dots from some of the lessons we've learned from Dr. Rich and how the college is doing things to get to how you might be better able to grow your business. So a few things which have stood out to me. Uh, Number one, when you have a need for future leaders and a need for staff, it very well may be that the best path for you is to create them. Uh, And as you go about doing that, or anything worth doing, you will come up with challenges and roadblocks. How can you most effectively get your objective, maybe in a different way? For example, when they decided we want to create this college to create our leaders and leaders for others, um, we don't want to wait to get accredited. We're going to find a partner who can do that. I I was uh, many years ago now working on a project to to help create this multi-use trail system throughout Hall County uh, called the Highlands to Islands Trail. Mm. We needed to accept some donations to do things. Yeah. And, you know, setting up a 501c3 would have been quite time consuming, et cetera. And so we partnered with a different organization, right. the Community Foundation, who we need to have on the show one day. Great, great group. Um, and we're able to utilize them and their 501c3. Anyway, there's a there's multiple different ways to achieve your objective. You just described the Free Chapel Church model of missions, model of serving all, all, all that um so what we tend to do is when there's a crisis in a country for example like haiti when they had the earthquake in 2010 um we don't have the know-how or the the ability to do things that, that need to be happening on the ground so we find people that are doing it and doing it well mm-hmm. and we resource those folks we've been providing over 200,000 meals a month at the, the, the nation of Haiti through a feeding center and a we developed we built over a hundred homes there we developed an entire marketplace all right there and we don't actually do any of it but we we facilitate as as far as financially with resources and all those kinds of things whether it's human trafficking or um, we're building bomb shelters in Israel we're building oh. schools and bomb shelters right along the Gaza Strip. Uh, we're doing amazing things all over, but we're not sending like a hundred people over to build a bomb shelter. We're we're finding people that that know how to build build bomb shelters better than anybody else in the nation of Israel, mm-hmm. and we are funding them, and we are actually going over there, and we're we're helping provide leadership. Uh, you know, our pastors met with the prime minister of Israel. We we are working with people at those levels to partner with people that are already doing this better than we could do it. Like you said, we could have spend all this money and try to do all this and have our own accreditation is that way. Or we could partner with a university that already has that mm-hmm. and they're doing it. It would take us 15 years to get where they are. Mm-hmm. We can start there today. And that's the other thing. I, I think uh, that's the one thing um, elementary schools and high schools are doing better. They, I think even sometimes in, in secondary education or, or post-secondary education, they're creating strategic partnerships mm-hmm. with corporation, with the corporate world, strategic partnerships so they can do things they never could have done on their own through budgets or fundraising or car washes or cookie sales or anything else like that. And so it's, again, that connectivity. Mm -hmm. And so staying connected to the community, staying connected to the needs that are presented. In our missions missions, uh, practicum, we'll have several students on our missions practicum this year. We're not just having them sitting around raising money to try to go visit a country for eight days. Uh, there's opportunities for them to do that, but they can start in next week when our classes start. They can actually go in, and we have a whole program we're setting up through AI and through technology to where they can actually go into that country virtually, uh, find out the needs. They're gonna there's gonna be language acquisition taking place. All those things can happen right now mm-hmm. without them actually having to go there. There's things you can do today you couldn't do 10 years ago through technology and those kinds of things. I love it. And um, as, again, that's a partnership. That's connecting the learning to actually doing. The studies that have come out on young people, 18 to 25, 30, 
it talks about how they don't want this path where they got to sit and learn and wait. They want to be active now. They believe they can change the world, and they want to start doing that. They're looking for mentors. They're looking for places that um, where they can get in and actually begin to get their hands dirty. They don't just want to give lip service to things. They want to actually change the world. They want to do something. And there's ways that they can begin doing things right now. And that's why, like I said, the traditional college, the traditional college route is like, you know, give us four years and then maybe kind of thing mm-hmm. where they could be doing it now. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and, and then that's really what we're learning. Absolutely. Some places are doing things like you talked about earlier when we were talking before the program with gap years and things like that. What we say here, we're, we're not asking them to look at it like gap years. Like, okay, here's two years to just kind of like set aside and don't really count. We're saying give us two years for God to show you a picture of your future. And not just a picture, but a picture that you've been preparing two years to take the next step in. And so, th- again, there's that connectivity mm-hmm. to, like, what is God doing uh, and, and to connecting, connecting what God is doing in their life to what they're doing on a daily basis over time that prepares them to do that for a living. Mm-hmm. And so our kids get jobs. And, and um, our, I get phone, we get phone calls from people that want to hire our kids. We have programs uh, that are contacting us uh, that are similar to us or starting like us saying, okay, we want to do – can we come see what you're doing? Can we come uh, get an eye of what the idea of what that looks like? And so we've gone to be in the school seven years ago that's looking and kind of modeling after others that now some others are starting to model after us a little bit. And so I don't say that with pride. I just say that with there's a trend that's happening right now with young people, yeah, especially a post-pandemic trend where it's like life is short and I don't want to do things that don't matter. I want to do things that I care mm-hmm. about. And I want to do them now. I have the energy now. I have the time now. I have the, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm unattached now. Yep. I don't have kids now. And I'm not married. I, I have more ability to do things now than at any other point I'm going to have. And they're, I find they're, they, they're ready to go. They just need direction, leadership, structure, and the chance to show what they can do. I love it. And I, there's a few words that stand out that, that are key. First, you have to have just complete commitment to your goal. To, to achieve, and I'm specifically thinking about utilizing these partnerships. You have to have commit. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do this training program, or we're going to change the world, or, or whatnot. And you have to have uh, openness, but then really you have to have humility. I, I don't think that what you're saying comes from a place of pride at all, but because you have to have humility to say it's not just about us. We don't have to get accredited and do this. We don't have to go make mm-hmm. free chapel. At, we're going to send free chapel folks over. And we're going to build a thing in Haiti. Have you ever read the book Toxic Charity? No. You'd like it. Put it on your list. I'll put it on my list. And it's along those same lines of specifically for the uh, charity work or missions work. You're sending money over to and you're empowering folks in Israel mm-hmm. who are then you're employing those uh, people. Exactly. Building their community. And they have ownership in it. And input into a community that we don't really understand like yes. they do anyway. I, 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 I was just thinking, you talk about a leadership principle. For a, a lot of the business owners that might be listening right now that are hiring young people, you're depending on young people. They're having a hard time keeping young people. They're, they're having a hard time retaining workers and things like that. I, I would just make a couple suggestions for you. One is, is that as opposed to just seeing them as there to do a task and go home, Use opportunities to teach and to grow them. So because it'll, they'll connect more to what you're doing. For example, um, gather them every now and then and say, "Okay, here's a little dilemma we're facing. That, that how can we do this better? Let them give input. Mm-hmm. Uh, even even the, even the case studies and say, "Okay, we're going to come up on the Christmas season, and, and there's going to be these kinds of things. You know, I went through my first Christmas season six years ago." And here's the things I had to think through. What would you have done six years ago? Mm. If you were me, what would you have done six years ago? Mm -hmm. Ask them those kind of questions. You'd be amazed at some Mm. of the responses they have. And then say, or, and even better yet, better yet, present that to them. Say, here's the dilemmas I went through. We're going to come back in five days and I want to hear your ideas. And and when you ask them, I I have found people rise up to the expectations you put on them and you have to you have to say okay i expect this person's going to have good ideas but then i'm not going to sabotage it 
when they throw out an idea that I, with my experience, yeah. realize is dumb. Yes. You know, it's like, hey, that's why we're doing right. this. But add add the incubation element. And mm. So it, incubation is, is a learning thing that says that basically even – in your meetings, okay. Let's say you're going to have staff meetings. Oh, and we're gonna we have unfortunately we have ten seconds left to incubate. So give them the chance to think through. That's correct. All right. The, the chance to think through the responses. Say, here's what we're going to talk about in the meeting. In three days, we're having this meeting. Now they come with a different now response. Now you come with it. That's right. Dr. Rich, thank you so much for joining us on North Georgia Business Radio X been listening to North Georgia Business Radio X with Phil Vanelli. What local business do you know that should be highlighted on our program? Let us know. Just search North Georgia Business Radio X on Facebook or contact Bo at businessradiox.com. See you next time and remember to support our local businesses.